going on peeps uh, I do apologize for the videos that have not been out in the past two days I've been having uh, lower back issues so sitting down for a long time has been quite difficult but I thought we'd do a quite difficult video today and explaining like the repercussions and the price you have to pay for messing around with things that you don't understand in the paranormal world which obviously I did from quite a, well not a young age but late teens into like adult years so one of the videos i explained how it all started but i didn't really go into like depths on how it affected me after the next eight years which was quite difficult so a lot of things people will see like ghosts spirits full uh, full body apparitions certain things like that whereas because i messed around with Ouija boards, uh, rituals, certain things like that, it's a little bit different. So, over the course of like the first three years, like I started to see like shadow people, and with that, it was very faint to begin with. It was like out of the corner of my eye, or I'd walk down stairs down into my like down into where all the bedrooms are and in the dark you'd see something darker which makes no sense to like people who's not experienced it but you could see like a darker figure in the darkness but then every time you get closer it disappear so this this led for like the first three years and i was just like well i can deal with this Obviously, I knew what had happened and what I was associated with. Obviously, I didn't didn't really know about shadow people back then. The only thing I knew about them was that they were associated with sleep paralysis. That's where the most common ones come from. Because when you're in the paranormal field, when you're uh, doing a ghost investigation or paranormal investigation, th there's there's a difference between like a black mass and like a shadow person. There's like a, there's quite a, a difference between their demeanors and where they come from and stuff so at, at the start i was just like i was just seeing these like dark shadows and i was like oh, i'll just leave it i know what's happening i was like like at this point i was expecting it but then like four years in it started it started just getting annoying it started affecting my life in a way that was different and it was noticeably bit different and what i mean by this is like in the, th in the three years, I was the same person. But then the fourth hit, and then my family started noticing a change in me, my friends. Uh, I wasn't going out because it, it, was, it was draining. It felt, like a, it felt like oppression. And then it started happening why I was sleeping. So I had to be asleep, and I'd feel something on the bed. And then I'd look and it, something would dart away. Or something would block out a light. Like the light source I've got for recording that's shining down, it, it'd fully block it out and then move again. So I was like, oh, this is, this, is, this is not good. So like the fourth year in, it started to change me really bad. The fifth year, that's when I started hearing voices. So I'd, I'd hear these like... Uh, really faint people talking and at the start I was like oh, it's, someone's left a telly on it's something outside um, so I'm going around all my house checking everything I'm looking outside make sure nothing's there and it's, and then there's nothing there so I'm, I'm sat there wondering oh well what's just happened like am I losing my mind because now I'm hearing voices but they're not talking directly to me it's like they're talking about me but it's all muffled it's it's, it's kind of a weird experience it, it, it does it sounds like something's in a, in the distance like you'd like your TV or something's on so this went on for a while and at this point I was just like as long as it's not affecting my sleep I, I don't have an issue with it I can handle throughout the day because at this point I was I was hard into witchcraft I was hard into paranormal investigating I was hard into demonology I was I was like down the rabbit hole so at this point i was like it's not it's not a big issue you know what i mean we've been on investigations where crazy stuff's happening sometimes it follows you home and then goes back or you have to get rid of it by 
you know, like casting it out. But then a year later, it starts affecting my sleep. So I'm trying to sleep and it's, it's shouting in my ear, waking me up. And with me only getting an hour's sleep, two hours sleep a day, and not even that, it, it wakes you up like it's like alerting you. And then you'd wake up. And because obviously I'm never in a deep sleep, I'll hit REM cycle sometimes, depending if my body's just shut down and it's just, I'm just fully knocked out. So I wake up and I'm fully alert, and then I'll see them again out of the corner of my eye, or, or I'm, I'm physically watching them walk through. Uh, you probably you probably can't see it. So behind my computer screen, there's like another like four foot of like space, and then I'd see them walk through the wall, which would go straight into my living room, and then walk back through, and it was it was becoming like crazy annoying now because now i can't sleep now i'm having to deal with this while also dealing with some other things that was going off in my life and now i'm just like trying to trying to compress everything into the, the like the smallest safest like emotionless part of me like and i'm just thinking just forget it just like you know just don't let it affect you and it will go away well, you six and seven, like years six and seven. So this has been going on for like six years now. So I'm drained. But if people were to look at me, they'd just think it was my sleep deprivation and insomnia, which it was. But then it was also this this whole scenario that was going off. And then I was like, well, if I'm going to do it, I might as well find out who they are. So that's when I started investigating them. And then asking dumb questions and certain things which logically is the right thing to do but then it's illogical because it's always in your own house so you're either going to make it better or worse or it's just not going to go anywhere so obviously i didn't get in contact with the the shadow people even though we did well yeah we did evp session i ran a gonsfeld experiment and i think we went for two days and it was nothing, nothing like no shadow people, nothing on that aspect. Except from now, I'm getting a female talking to me through the headphones, what I can hear when I'm doing the Gonsfeld experiment saying, oh, uh, look for tattoos, look for tattoos. And I was just like, but my tattoos? The people I'm with, tattoo, who's tattoos? Because obviously I've got loads of tattoos. They've got loads of tattoos. I, I, it, it was all that she said. She said it four times and then nothing. So I was like, right, I can't I can't do this. And my building's not It's not in any creepy place. It's not had any tragedy. It, it, there's no cool activity. There's no crazy deaths, murders, suicide. There's none of that. So I'm like, what is happening? Like, So to get in my building... Well, not my built like my house to ring the door. There's like a phone, so I can speak to people, obviously. And I'm like, and then you gotta come up, like, like cause it's th like technically it's three stories. So I'm in my kitchen making myself a drink, and then it's got a, it's got like a unique noise. The phone, like obviously, cause I've I've lived in this thing like this building for ten years, so I know every sound it makes, and it's got a unique noise when you move it or pick it up or put it down so i'm sat in my kitchen and i'm like i hear this like uh it's like because it's because it's like a it's plastic and metal phone so i hear this like plastic like like someone had lifted it off a little bit and put it back on and i was like oh someone's just moving the phone behind me like i turn around and i was like is my brother or something no nobody there so i'm like Right, that was just one off. I'm uh, that was not the f like I, in, my, in my head. I'm trying to process it, so I'm, I'm sat there like it's not the phone, but I know it is because I've lived here for 10 years. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, I'm sat here again, and then I hear it again. But as I hear it, the light turns on and off real fast because the, the say there's a wall here, 
this is the back side of the wall so I'd be this side in the kitchen so the phones there are the top of the staircase so like I say your uh, staircase is here you walk up phones there other side of the wall and the walls only like that big is the is the light switch and I was like I was like someone just turn the light switch off but not even because some, sometimes people just like automatically just see a light on and they switch flip switch off and turn it off and I was like Fine. I was like no right so I was like are we like like as me doing this Gonsfeld experiment mess things up have I have I really like have I broke my house like have I just made things worse I was sat there and I was like right what's happening so I, I get my my drink and then it happens again the minute I back the minute I turn around light goes off but then I was like in my head I was expecting it to come straight back on it it didn't I was like what so I stood there it was one of the moments where I was like oh I wasn't afraid but my body acted like it was I froze I couldn't move it sent shivers down me and I, I couldn't move but in my mind I'm, I'm trying to move I'm like move like you're not scared you've done you've seen worse than this you've been in worse positions than this I'm like right and then I see uh, as the light switch is like back on I see a hand go from this light switch so it would be a hand and then arm to like here and I could see like tattoos at the bottom of the arm and I was like because at first I thought it was blood but then when I like took a moment to look at it it was definitely it was it was like black tattoos but because the light had just switched on so fast I was like what and I saw it move from the light switch all the way around and I was like I'm full on going crazy now nah, that's not light switch to then it I physically watched it move my phone as it went down and round and it made the same noise that I was hearing like it moved it off it off like it's the hook for a real second then is it like flicked it back on and then it and then I'm, I'm like I run well not like full sprint but to check nothing there so I'm like oh what is what is happening so now I've now I've got shadow people voices and now I'm seeing not full body wrap but body parts floating around interacting with stuff in my house and I was just like this is this is bonkers I didn't know what I didn't know what to do at this point so I, I decided I'm just gonna I'm gonna see what protections I can get uh, sigils spell work and I like obviously you can't see it now around this around this room because it's been decorated but it had sigils uh, like lesser keys of Solomon spell work voodoo everywhere every protection like symbol spell magic was all over this wall and the hardest thing was to do was try and find the ones that wouldn't counteract each other and cancel them so it took it i think it took five days five days in total to research it all and put it all up on the walls and it was it was bonkers like people will walk into my room and be like what's all over you what's all over your wall and then you try and explain without trying to sound like too sketchy and you just couldn't it was just like i oh, just ignore it it's all right so at this point now my room becomes the safest place possible so I'm, I'm not seeing anything i'm still not sleeping obviously sleeping somewhere but i'm not seeing anything i'm not hearing anything so i'm like oh it's bonus we've, we've, we've done it but all i did was like piss it off to be honest with you. let's just let's just be honest let's use i pissed it off to the point where every time i tried to do uh like a protection spell on myself doing witchcraft outside my obviously in in certain areas i'm not going to go into too much detail in this video i'll go into the next one but in certain areas it, it then it'd start again but it'd start all at the same time so i'd see them i'd feel like they were like engulfing me and then i'd hear it non-stop and like th then this went off like the last year so now we're on like eight years into it eight years deep into something that no one I know who's near me can help me 
and obviously I just thought I was by myself in it I was like I was like there's no way no one else is going through this stuff like I can't talk to anybody everyone I talk to about it they think I'm crazy people look at my tattoos on my body and I just like what are you like a devil worshipper or something not no it's like they're judging me um something that is keeping me safe and yeah some of them have meaning to some people which make them fearful but the rest of the world should just get to know me and that wasn't the case so at this point I think 16 days in to so March 16th was the day I'd had enough and I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't cope anymore and then it led me to try and take my own life whether or not it was the shadow people who was doing it or if it was just me not being able to cope with it anymore I wouldn't know uh, so yeah that's that's what I did I, I tried to take my own life failed woke up and then realised I'd uh, I'd done like instant regret and I was like I really need to get this sorted out but then the less attention I gave it after that after the after the the whole suicide attempt thing was I think they thought they'd won so they like they kind of left me alone and then it just it 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 stopped for a bit but I still wasn't sleeping so I wasn't really helping myself and don't get me wrong throughout this whole eight years eight year period every night I'd shut my eyes I would have nightmares but we spoke about on the last video like I would have a re reoccurring same three to four nightmares which would make me like which would wake me up I'd be sweating I'd have to change my clothes my bed sheets because I'm just drenched in sweat and I'm panicking but it's that thing of like I'm I'm so used to it that my my brain's not panicking my brain's just like normal brain's just like oh well it's happening again but my body's reacting to it and it was so that wasn't helping through all the the eight years and then nine and ten like year nine and ten because that was going on for eight years nine and ten is carried on which will lead to this day that i'm making this video and the voices still happen on occasion uh i still see shadow people now and again uh but it's definitely calmed down a lot since i've since i've understood it more since i've not just gone let me just mess around with loads of crazy stuff that that i shouldn't have been messing around with and that they like i was taking things from uh ritual sites that i shouldn't have been taking i was so curious and had like a mini addiction to the occult i just dove straight in and just pretty much ruined myself and like that is not the way to go so it was a it, I thought oh I'd pay the price but I wasn't expecting the price to be this much as in how long it's took to get into a like a somewhat of a normal situation because don't get me wrong while all this was going off there was no like I wasn't isolated except from like a six month period where I didn't leave my bedroom for six months I was doing coven stuff cult activities I, I, I wouldn't speak to some friends and it was it got to the point after the 10 years where I'm like right I can, I can safely say I'm okay now I've learned everything I need to learn but there's no way I still can't communicate with them I don't know how to I can do like I say I can do ghosts demons but the only thing that keeps eluding me is shadow people and I don't get it from sleep insomnia. So trying to investigate it is is kind of difficult. And I don't know if anyone else has investigated them, like without, uh, who's not had sleep insomnia or anything like that. Is is the only way I can think about it is is getting someone with sleep insomnia and trying to recreate the perfect scenario where you monitor them sleeping, depending on how often. 
they have sleep paralysis just to see if anything changes but even that's a, a, a stretch even that's crazy because it's you're asking someone to then video proof because they're always in the back of the mind there's always that there's that always a little bit where it's like they're safe but then if they video it and then capture something then they know it's 100 percent real so it, it brings it into like the forefront of the mind and now they're they're being like well i shouldn't have really done that because at least i had a little safe space being like oh is it actually it only happens when i'm asleep and stuff but we know if you push the paranormal or anything even the unknown to a limit it pushes back so i'm i'm at a loss on how to to investigate them like by myself as in someone who only has them or who only had it through stupidity whereas i would my thought the other day was if we can get someone in the Gonsfeld experiment and then someone who has sleep paralysis issues next to him hooked up to people know what God's helmet is if you're in the paranormal field it's like loads of electrodes on your head and then link the two and then obviously one asks the question then one receives it and answers it as in listens to it But then you've got to consider getting through and this is this is going to sound harsh but the amount of shit people talk because that's why the paranormal field doesn't really get taken that serious because there's, imagine there's that much fake stuff being pumped out pump pump pumped like out of 90 let's say out of 100 videos you watch there's probably only like one real clip maybe but there's that much fake stuff, it all just gets shoved under like, oh, it's fake, it's, it's, it's hoax, it's made up. So trying to go through, well, I presume hundreds, maybe thousands of encounters of shadow people from sleep paralysis to not, it's, it's painful and it's, it's that thing of, unless you're going to do it in person and get in front of them, because obviously you can read someone a bit better if you're in front of them. I don't like, there's no option on what to do. So I've, I've been stuck at the minute, being like, well, what do, do I, the only thing I'm glad that they don't do is follow me to my investigations, or ghost hunts, or other things, because then that, now that's affecting, that's me bringing my personal stuff into something that other people are doing, so it's going to affect it crazily, even though they wouldn't mind, they'd probably investigate it, they'd be like, oh, let's just investigate you, that's not something I'm willing to do. So, the only the only price you want to be paying is being tired for just researching. Just research your knowledge before you jump into stupid things. Like, ask yourself if, if this is what you want to do. If, if you're willing to pay the price and not do stupid things, because it's, it, it does, it takes, it takes a, it takes a part of you and just, it's gone. I'm never getting that part back. Eight years of my life, there's a part of me that I'll never get back. And it's it's unfortunate that it happened. Because people who just people who are, who are getting targeted by it, like I feel so sorry for them. Like like I, I don't I don't want people's pity or anything like. Because I'll always say if someone wants to ask, like always ask me. I'm an open book. I'm quite direct with it. I'm not gonna sit here and just sugarcoat it. I'm gonna tell you the truth on how it went down. And some things are horrible, but we're just gonna get into it because this is what people need to know. You need to learn these types of things. You can't just keep sugarcoating it for people and just making it all this like crazy stuff that's out on the on the internet. Because there's, there's sometimes not easy, like sometimes it's people's lives that are being affected. So. I just, I'd prefer people to just be like, just ask me because it's my stupidity, so I'm not going to do it. So it's it's easier for, how can I put this? It's easier for me to live my life in the eight years, even though they were hard. 
because I was still up because it was my fault. So, like, I was paying the price. But for other people who aren't, and it's not their fault, and they're just getting picked on, and never had sleep paralysis in my whole life. So I don't know how it is. I'm not. I'm not saying I know how that is. So that must be like they they have a, like another layer on me, whereas. Like, I just went through it through like a paranormal side of it, but they're going through it where they physically can't do anything. They they're stuck. Like you can't run, you can't, you can't fight. There's some cases of of astral projection, but even that's dangerous. So I thought I'd just get it off my chest because it's it's one of the harder videos I'm gonna have to make, as in like the truth and explaining it and the fact that. Obviously, I did try to take my own life and the, the whole broad aspect of how not knowing something about a certain subject can have devastating effects. I'm lucky that it didn't, it didn't move on to my family. There was, there was a few instances where stuff was getting thrown off walls. Uh, some of my family members started seeing like things in picture frames, like in the glass so it, it did get kind of crazy. I was hearing, like I say, hearing screams outside my window. So it's, it's that thing of just be wary what you're messing with, understand it, and then you won't have to have, you won't have to, you won't have to walk around and have people comment on your tattoos, even though they're meaningful and they have a purpose and they'll be, obviously I've got more booked in ready for ready for carrying on because now it's going to tell a story it's, it's just not worth it it's not worth the risk and that's why you have to weigh up but i'm gonna leave the video there because that was kind of that was kind of mad and i've really not spoke about that side of it i've, I've only spoke i've always spoke about how i got into it obviously i'm not going to go into depth on how i tried to take my own life but because it's, it's not fair on some people. Some people will watch this video and it might trigger them. It, it, there's, there's, there's different aspects that happen. So I won't go into it. Unless it's really necessary and then I, I'll go into the whole side of it. If people want to want to understand. Because like I say, I'm open book. If, I'm, if, if my experience is going to help someone else out there find peace of mind. Or find the will to, to help themselves then that's what I'm going to do but on that note I'm going to end it there because uh, yeah it's more like 30 minutes of me ranting about it and uh, yeah peeps I will uh, catch you on the next one and as always stay safe stay in isolation keep other one, keep everyone nice and uh, entertained and I'll uh, catch you on the next one peace